Happiness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, a hope and trust. I find you all, my dear friends, and we have the privilege of meeting one more time on the series, Signs of the Times. Before we go into the word, may I take this time to thank one and all for tuning in to MS Creativers. We do not take your presence on this channel for granted. Thank you and may God bless you. Come with me to the book of Luke. We are at chapter 21 and we just want to look at verse 9 and 10. This is what the Bible says at verse 9. But when you shall hear of wars and tumults, be not afraid, for these things must first come to pass. But the end is not yet. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a moment in prayer. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of considering your word this morning, particularly for the reminder to lift up our heads and see the nearness of your return as tumults and wars surround us. Dear Lord, some of the wars are not political or within nations, but within our homes. We pray for those wars. May peace reign supreme in our homes. May peace reign supreme in our organizations. And above all, may peace be our portion as nations. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask. Amen. My good friends, allow me to raise five points as usual. The times in which we live are the times of tumult and war. Of late, we have heard the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Uh, people are losing lives. They are losing property. I'm not sure whether that should be classified as a war or just as an invasion. But from where I stand, the effects seem to be the same. And the Bible says, when you begin to see all these things, the end is not yet. But... But the coming draws nigh. The first point you're going to consider with me is that you shall hear of it. Some of us, we are going to experience war directly and some of us will only hear of it. We may read of it. We may uh, receive it as an oral narration from someone else or we may even read about it on our websites or screens. Even then, when you are far removed from all the pain, May this be not a reason to grow comfortable where you are and say, it does not concern me. As things are unfolding, you need to look at all these and interpret them also and above all in the context of salvation. Where are we as far as the return of our Savior is concerned? It continues to draw nearer and nearer than when we first believed. And point number two. Christ also gives this caution and he says, as you hear of these wars, as you read these wars, as you hear of these tumults, as you witness these tumults, you want to be sure you do not get terrified. These things ought to be. That is how they are said to be. It is unfortunate. It is unfortunate that lives may be lost in the process, but be not terrified. May your hope be lifted up. May your resolve be re-established in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As you pray for peace in the war-torn areas, you want to say, Lord, may I not be terrified. For when you look at all these things that are happening, they may be a cause for concern. Indeed, it may bring terror into your life. It may bring in all the wrong things in your life. Even then, be not terrified. But point number three, this is the other thing that the Bible says. He says, then, but the end is not yet. Why? For these things must first come to pass. The Bible gives us that there's a sequence on how these things move. There is no way these things must come before or later. They must come at the right time. The wars must precede the second coming. We cannot have a second coming and then the wars. It must come in at the right time. So when it happens, we want to say the Lord is still in control. When it happens, you want to say the Lord has not left his throne. At point number four, 
The Bible says nation shall rise against nation. Afghanistan, Ethiopia, and Yemen come on the left side as nations that have been affected by civil conflict claiming over 10,000 casualties. And on the right, we're going to have the drug war in Mexico. This one is where we have a civil rising and also drug cartels that are fighting against the government and they have claimed casualties of over 10,000. We do not mention the likes of Sudan. We do not mention the other countries that are at war. And we want to look at these and say, nations are indeed rising against nations physically. The children of God are experiencing this real time. As we trivialize the pain of many, there is a war that is going on and families are in great distress. As they look at all these things that are unraveling around them, the question is, where is God? And the Bible says, do not be terrified. These things must happen first. Do not be terrified. They must come to pass. And this is the greatest assurance. They will come to pass. For those who are watching from these places that are war-torn and they are ravaged by all forms of injustice, all forms of oppression, all forms of bloodshed, you want to be reminded, they will come to pass. On the point number five, there is the other thing, kingdom shall rise against kingdom. No more do we speak about the nations, for we have nationalities from where we hail from. We have nations that we are attached to. We may have kingdoms that we are attached to, but they are two kingdoms, basically. The kingdom of heaven. For God says the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man who did this, this, and that. The kingdom of, of heaven is uh, uh, like unto this and that that happened. When you go through the New Testament experience, it is a study of the kingdom. And the prince of this world is one who claims to run the affairs of this kingdom. And the Bible says, for a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom shall rise against kingdom. Why should we separate nations from kingdoms? Because nations are physical, nations are, are geographical, but kingdoms are spiritual. The kingdom of heaven is at war with the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness rises up against the kingdom of heaven and there shall be war and this must come to pass before Jesus shall appear for the second time. For when he appears, he says, it is finished. What then is finished? The battle of the kingdoms. The kingdom of light would have overcome over the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of Christ would have overcome over the kingdom of Lucifer. The kingdom of heaven would have won and it shall not pass unto another. The prophet Daniel makes this clear. As we go through the rest of this weekend, how I pray that, dear Lord, may the wars in our spaces come to pass. We have families, we have friends that are affected by, afflicted by these wars or affected in one way or another. How I pray that, dear Lord, these may enjoy peace and may it come to pass sooner. May these days of war be shortened, even in the Ukraine and Russia. May these days of war be shortened as we pray for peace. Let us pray for the aggressor and the aggrieved. Let us pray for the victimizer and the victim. For the Lord is the Lord who makes it rain upon the righteous and the unrighteous. He is the Lord of the blacks and the whites. He is the Lord of the civilian and the armed man. He is the Lord of the superior and the subordinate. Let us pray for one and all the Lord as you shorten these days. May the elect not be lost. May the elect not be deceived. This is my prayer of faith. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.